what made you write your first book? Um, so I've been a storyteller in various capacities for the past decade. I've been an actor. I dabbled in writing, directing, producing, did all of that for a while. Um, and I was very fascinated by the idea of creation, building, development, and I like the idea of taking the initiative rather than always waiting for something to come to you. And then the pandemic hit, and we all know how that was for all of us. It wasn't, it wasn't the best of times. You're just stuck at home, you're, you're consuming excessive content, there's only input, right? you're watching, you're, you're reading, but there was no vent, uh, you know, there was, no, there was no creative vent at all. And, um, and that's when I just, I just had this bizarre idea of, of, of this world that I wanted to create from all my inspirations. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just put them all together, um, see where it goes, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, and then, you know, it, it was, that, that was, that's what actually gave me some kind of purpose and drive through, through the, through COVID. I would wake up at five and sit there to write, gave me some kind of, some sense of passion. I remember even um, when I actually had COVID, I would uh, pop dolos and when you pop dolo, you know, you have this brief window when you feel like the fever has subsided and then I would quickly jump and write a few lines to feel a little fulfilled. Ah, okay, I'll just work And then, you know, and then feel terrible again. But uh, I think that was a very exciting process, very fulfilling process. And besides that, no one was giving me 300 crores to make a film out of it. So I thought, let's... Wonderful, wonderful. Hansel, sir, uh, you know, what is the first thing that you wrote or created? And what drew you towards it, that particular subject? You know, a uh, couple of things. One, uh, I am a lazy writer. And so I usually uh, trouble writers. <laughs> A lot. I make them uh, write for me. I've written uh, very early on in my career. I wrote uh, some short stories, which I film. I did. I write primarily to film. And uh, I wrote a film called Obata, so that nobody was willing to write. Uh, so I sort of had to write with a deadline. We had to. I to submit the script in 2005. I had no choice but to write. And uh, the film got made in 2017. So, 12 years after. How, how long did it take to two write? Days. Two days. <laughs> they, they wanted it in two days, and I lied to the producer saying the script is ready. So, that was my. Uh, so, writing came more out of compulsion. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, I always marvel that writing has a discipline. You know, I'm a reader, I'm a voracious reader. And, uh, I find writing uh, an amazing discipline to just sit down and write those pages and to churn out, you know. For me, writing is about having that discipline of churning out an X number of pages day after day, day after day. I mean, I have, I must have at least uh, 15 incomplete scripts and books on my desktop which I carry around, which uh, I uh, sort of, you know, make as a retirement point. You know, when I retire, I will finish all this. I will publish books and I will uh, sell my scripts. But uh, I don't see myself retiring at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you shouldn't, of course, because we, we would be, you know. Uh, you know one more thing, Heath, the question that she asked that what would you like to see in public? Yeah, yeah. More bookshops. That's true. Yeah. Round of applause for that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 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 I think it's essential. We, it, uh, it was an amazing culture that the city and a big part of our city's culture, uh, you know, book, bookstores. Like, uh, I remember when I was in school, there was a bookstore uh, uh, on SV Road called Wellington Bookstore. We used to go there, hang out there. You know, all those spaces are gone. Uh, you know, Lotus uh, Book House, which was at Reclamation. We used to spend hours there. I mean, that's where the first set of Khana Kazala uh, emerged from. The first set of recipes were chosen from there. You know, just sitting there, looking at the books, uh, and they never stopped you from sitting there and reading those books. And it's dying. I mean, you know, we are ordering it online, reading the synopsis. I find that I find that uh, great progress, but also uh, hindering uh, the joy of experiencing uh, books. It's great that you know there is a bookshop and such a big space. Uh, that is still alive and kicking in the city of Bombay. Well, some other phenomenon. 
No, I don't think it's. I don't think it was bottled up. It's just the going back to the previous point. I don't think there's any sense of uh, rebel rebelling to that idea. So I don't know. You is there something you don't want to? Yeah, Hansal, why can I? I, I, this uh, this particular clause I was not aware. Of. Yeah, even I, I was not aware of. Uh, I made my first film 27 years ago, maybe because I haven't made films on these themes. But uh, I was not aware of this. And yeah, I mean, there's been. It's I think it's come from uh, this. Uh, you know, I think Lord of the Rings, uh, Harry Potter. Uh, you know, that has really given rise to this. Uh, people have realized that there's a business model. That exists it's ultimately a business, and uh, I think that has uh, led to this. I think everyone was fascinated. We watched our uh, uh, spectacles and enjoyed them you know, since we were kids. But I think now uh, it's gone, come closer home. You know, the, uh, the British, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all this has taken on popular imagination. And all of us feel that there is a franchisable, uh, you know, potential for all these stories, which is why you know the Ramayana is being made uh, uh, with major stars, the Mahabharat is being made. Uh, you know, uh, we are retelling these stories, uh, and as I said earlier, it's, I'm glad it's being reinterpreted, and there is a new uh, newness. You know, we are telling the same stories. Thank you both of you start from but uh, first off majorly thank you so much Hansal sir for being here um, having expected filmmaker who I admire so much to be here supporting a first time author I think that really means a lot it's very very reassuring so thank you thank you so much uh, my parents my family who've been there with me they've stood by me seen it all the best family I could ask for New Voice Press Kevin Misal uh, Simon and Schuster everyone who makes this dream come through publishing a book is like the toughest thing to get done uh, and these guys really made it almost a walk in the park. And it, it's really, it's, it, I mean, I think they need to be extending, more people need to be extending this kind of support to authors. Uh, Divyan, for supporting the book and doing everything in his power to make this a success. Thank you so much, Divyan. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a really, really long journey. And strangely, I can say that it's only begun, right? And when, I think, when it does get tough, I'm going to literally remember this moment when all of you turned up on a Sunday morning. Like, well done, a round of applause to you all. As all my colleagues here, and often at lunch we talk about how on Saturday, Sundays we just become couch potatoes. That's, that's all we want to do, we want to do nothing else. So, And I'm sure that's the same for all of you after a tiring week, so thank you so much, really means a lot. And um, I have to say the best for the last, I kind of spoke about this a little earlier, but I think it's worth revisiting. She's been instrumental in putting this event together and she kind of really made it her own. She's a fantastic writer and I think that's why she really understands the struggles, the journey that a writer makes. Uh, and not to mention her ability to leave a lasting impression, maintain relationships and see a vision come through. All of these elements have really, uh, have really, been, have really played a major role in making this event a grand success. So please, round of applause for my fiancé. I'm once again just really humbled for all of you to be here. I just want to leave you, I think, with one small thing, if I may. Uh, this has been addressed several times, but no harm in bringing it up again. As a, as a budding artist, I think, of any kind, we, we, the world tends uh, not to be the kindest place. Not always, but maybe more often than not, getting something started, getting something out there. I think it becomes almost demotivating, discouraging. I'm seeing a lot of artists over here, writers, filmmakers, uh, directors. I mean, it's, it's amazing to kind of have this support, but I think we all know that the struggle is real, right? Um, and I think if everyone like you have this morning can just extend that hand of support and pick up that one book, pick up that one painting, watch that one play, I think if you show that kind of support, uh, that slight sense of reassurance is what will help us come back to the page or come back to the stage, or come back to the screen. That goes a long way for all of us. So all the artists, please do continue doing this. And uh, thank you so much, thank you so much for being here. Have a good day. Thank you so much. For those of you who want to take whatever I Could you tell us a little about the rights of the project? Um, 
I'd like to say that it's a cultural fusion. It's got different elements of mythology coming together. You've got uh, elements from Western mythology, from Hindu mythology. All of this kind of fuses in together. Angels, Asuras, Rakshasas, but all set in a modern context in a city like Mumbai. So you literally have, say, an Asura and an angel conspiring to take over Mumbai. And you've got this 26-year-old copywriter who is caught or embroiled in this entire chaos. Uh, and then what unveils is what happens. So that could happen to any one of us, you know. Like how it happens in New York City, what can happen in Amchi Mumbai? That's the... How long did it take you to write this book? Um, I wrote the first draft. It took me about six to eight months to get the first draft out. And then I just did my own thing of... I mean, it's called self-publishing. We just put it out there and you figure out a way. Um, and then I think about a year or so later, uh, I had Kevin's company, New Voice Press, came on board, they picked up the book and now it's almost, it has a new life, it's uh, seeing a new journey. So I think end to end, it could be about two years maybe, since the time I thought about it and yeah. What made you pick up this book? Uh, what I really liked is how the angels and the azuras kind of came together and there was a fusion of uh, different myths from all over, all over the world. And I think that is what really interested me into it and that is why the reason I picked up and plus I always bet on the author more than the book so I'm uh, so I, I, I took a bet on Abhishek he's a very vibrant and a very uh, energetic guy so yeah I'm Saldeep it's so nice to see you here for a realistic filmmaker this is a work of fiction so tell us what excited you about coming here and supporting us the work that we do is all born out of fantasy and uh, we look at uh, you know, mythology as a way to sort of expand our universe, our mental universe, our imagination. And I'm glad that, you know, this writing is being done by younger writers, that they're embracing this form, that storytellers like us uh, can, uh, you know, sort of aspire to make a fantasy which is not necessarily steeped uh, in the past. A fantasy that is steeped into, uh, that merges the past the future and the present. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's amazing. Abhishek is a talented writer and uh, just to be here to support him uh, in this endeavor, I think uh, it's my honor. Sir, any chance Rise of the Fallen will be made into an OTT show or a film by Ansel Mehta? I, I mean, I, I'm always hopeful that, uh, you know, good work finds a larger audience and uh, that uh, this book finds uh, an audience that is visual, particularly myths have great visual uh, uh, potential. So I hope that this gets made and uh, I mean I've already put my hands up for the rights. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we are able to make this happen. The million dollar question, which role do you envisage yourself playing for you write stories like screenplay? Um, I mean, so when I think for me, when I started writing off this book, I tried to stay as close to home as possible. So you you start with the experience, lived in experiences, right? So you can write honestly, you can really feed off those instead of writing about a character that you don't really know about. So I think I have to say it'll have to be the central character because a lot of the things, the way he leads his life, the way he makes his journey was inspired from the thing that I went through, right? It's just easier when you it comes off, comes across as more honest, I think. So definitely. Being an author is one thing, supporting authors is another. How do you manage both the roles? I don't. <laughs> I, 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 it's very hard, and uh, but I try my very best to actually uh, be there for all the writers. I know how tough it is to be a writer out there. Uh, I know how uh, lonely the job is. And uh, I think if uh, he has, if Abhishek has friends like me and I have friends like Abhishek, and Ansel sir as well, I think we all are supporting writers out there and yeah, so I think that's great, that's how it should be. Any last words, Abhishek? Buy the book, <laughs> please buy the book <laughs> and uh, and please let me know what you think, I'm really eager to uh, know that, good, bad, ugly, whatever your thoughts, please, please, please let me know. And of course, like the way Hansel sir showed up and supported, please go out there, support first time authors, playwrights, screenwriters, actors, please just show your support and whatever you do, little will go a long way for them. Thank you. Thank you so much.